Okay, today we have Megan Smallbeck. Um, she's going to be presenting on her capstone project. Are CW Surf Information Center services adequate for those with sensory disabilities? So take it away, Megan. So everybody who lives on campus in the central Ellensburg um, campus comes into the CERC at least once during their student career. It makes it almost your living room away from home for these students. And beyond that, the CERC is a public building that allows so many different people to come in and partake in the services possible. With that, the population that the CERC serves goes into so many different areas of life, including those with disabilities. Specifically, I'm examining our sensory disabilities. And to start off, I need to know a little bit about what I'm talking about, right? I need to have some credibility to what I'm saying. So to start off, this is me and my lovely fiance and our dog. Um, my name is Megan. I'm a deaf and sign language studies major. It's a brand new major as of the past couple of years. So are you rehearsing? No, I'm going. It's at 10.15. Oh, it's at 10.15? Oh, oh no. Sorry. It's okay. okay. <laughs> However, uh, <laughs> this is fine. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to keep going. Yeah. I can. Okay. Okay. Sorry. As I was saying, um, I'm part of our Deaf and Sign Language Studies program. Um, so I have had the privilege of spending the past four years studying um, kind of one of these facets of sensory disabilities. Um, additionally, I um, joined our accessibility program at spring of 2020, so during a really rough time in this world. Um, but I have had the honor of learning even more facets of accessibility and disability and um, just how to make this world one with more access to it. Um, additionally, I have spent the past three years um, on our student union operations team as an information center attendant. Um, this past year, I've actually been our lead. So I've kind of gotten up close personal view of what our services look like and how we can improve them. But diving into what our context of this is, um, since we are a central location, we provide student services for students. We um, help guests, we help all this population I was talking about that enter the CERC. Um, so I'm gonna turn this way so I can see. Um, so since we are a service and inquiry provider, um, we need to be on top of what we know for our students, but also on top of how can we provide them the best access to these services. Additionally, we have so many different visitors and with that is our sensory disability population. As described by the Americans with Disabilities Act, our sensory disabilities, or as say sometimes called communication disabilities, relate to anything that affects the five senses. Typically this denotes to being blind, deaf, or mute. With that, they um, set some guidelines as to what public areas need. Um, this can include um, text-to-speech software, braille, large text, um, and even just being trained as customer service attendants. Um, so diving into a little bit about this goal, um, as it says on the screen, the goal of this project was to review the accessibility of services provided by the Student Union Information Center from the point of view of students with sensory disabilities. So I've kind of touched on that a little bit already. Um, and so to dive into a little bit of our background of what we need to know. With our user experience of the CERC Information Center, we have three primary areas that we cater to. This includes our printing services, our customer service, and our technology services. Our printing services changed in summer 2019 to the WEPA program that uses cloud-based printing techniques um, across campus. These promoted a little bit of a challenge for all students, but even more for those that have sensory disabilities as there wasn't a ton of training surrounding this. Next, we also have our customer service um, area of inquiry and question. Um, in the information center, this is probably our top area of service to all of our patrons. Um, this can be in form of email, 
calling and in-person customer service from poster approval, campus navigation, um, and just general inquiries about Central Washington University. And lastly, we have our technology use. Um, this denotes mostly to our laptop checkout program, um, which tends to run pretty smoothly because um, Central has so much awareness when it comes to accessibility and disability services. Um, but that checkout process just goes through swiping a card and uh, having the student show up in the program. So it's a pretty simple service. And now some more background knowledge that we need to know comes into our legal liability, um, some of our guidelines that the United States and some of our accessibility um, programs have come up with. The first, as I mentioned before, is our ADA, the Americans with Disability Act, that was, um, that was put into act in 1990. Um, so it's pretty recent. Most people don't think that these disability rights areas are um, that recent, but it actually is kind of our... <laughs> almost end all be all of um, disability guidelines across the US. Um, it gives us a good guideline in public spaces on um, what we need to know. And as I mentioned before, it kind of outlines for each area of disability, including the sensory disability areas. Our second area that I wanted to look into was poor. So this is actually a web accessibility guideline program, um, but I believe that it can kind of play into a variety of fields um, beyond just web accessibility. POR is an acronym for perceivable, operable, understandable, and, geez, I am blanking at this moment on what our R stands for. Robust. Um, just give me a moment. Robust. Robust, thank you, MVP. Um, I almost said receivable, that's not correct. <laughs> so it is robust. So these four areas um, kind of, break down how web programs are produced so that all people can understand them. But in this realm, in the public space, we need to make sure that our information we're providing is perceivable, it's operable, understandable, and robust. So this is an area that can apply to more than just the web scheme. Lastly, we have universal design. Um, this is also a pretty new concept that um, was established and this kind of looks at the areas of life that go beyond disability accommodation. Um, this looks into how we can make these accommodations more of just a way of life for everyone to use. A good example of this relates to bike cutouts on the sidewalk. Um, everyone can use them. It makes it easier on your joints. It makes it accessible for people that are on wheelchairs. So that's just a good example of what universal design uses. Um, and they have seven principles as well. This includes equitable use, flexible in use, simple and intuitive use, perceptible information, tolerance for error, low physical effort, and size and space for approach and use. So these are just seven of the quick guidelines that go into universal design. Um, but let's dive into um, kind of an examination of the information center services. So when I was examining the services provided by the Information Center, I kind of boiled it down to three main areas. One of the first ones was the disability services training um, for our student staff. Personally, since I have gone through about three trainings at this point with the student union operations team, I personally have yet to gain any training for how to um, work with people that have any sort of disability. I've also found that in working with my coworkers, that when we have someone who is deaf or blind that walks up, they get a sense of panic. How do I understand this person? How do I work with them to the best of my capability? And in those situations, I've had to almost on the job train my coworkers on how to work with these people. So in that lack of area, I believe that implementing sort of a training for all of our student union staff would be essential in better serving our student population. In researching this idea, I actually found that up in Canada, they have a requirement for all customer service um, attendants to go through a accessible customer service training. In Ontario, they have their, Ontar their Ontarians with Disabilities Act um, that was a really good example of how this can be implemented and required 
by even all of the university's employers. But going into that, I feel like finding a training for our student union staff would be essential in even our fall training or every quarter so that all staff can better serve this community. Our second area that I saw we could improve included redesigning the WEPA print systems. As I mentioned before, many, many, many students have had issues with these print systems. They constantly face roadblocks and they constantly are just frustrated with these systems lack of smoothness and capability. It is a cloud print system, so students must upload their um, documents to a cloud and then go to a print station all around campus and find that document in their account and print it out. I have found that our print systems actually lack accessible technology. Um, there's no braille documentation on the outside of it, and within it, there lacks any headphone jack for those that need a text-to-speech function, as well as enlarging the text it does not have. In research into what WEPA's done for accessibility, they have made accessible changes before. At Pima Community College, they had some directors of, of disability services reach out to WEPA and ask and plead for more accessible printing systems. In that situation, WEPA actually went out and set up a new system so it was accessible to wheelchair users and blind users. But this sort of change that they made was a one-time situation and hasn't been carried over across systems. So I would encourage um, our student union directors to reach out to WEPA themselves and again, plead for this and make it known that this is a service that can be provided across all campuses that WEPA is implemented at. Um, our last area that I kind of boiled down to was in the exact layout of our Student Union Information Center. If you're in person, you guys, you can walk downstairs and see it for yourselves after this presentation, but it is an L-shaped desk. And to kind of give you a layout of it, I have a couple visuals for you guys. It is kind of hard to see, but this corner is kind of the basis of what the information center is. It has this pillar in the corner that breaks off the customer service experience. And for someone who is blind, it can be really hard to navigate. I personally have worked with a couple of our students who are blind and even just finding our couple printers around the desk are difficult to find. Now, this pillar is structurally sound for the building. We need it to keep our second floor up and running. But with that, there's a couple other options that I think we could implement. The first kind of takes from our friends across the pond in Europe. They actually have some tactile strips on their sidewalks that allow blind users to navigate to some of their important governmental buildings. This is a definite strategy that we could implement, even just putting some tactile tape on the ground that blind users could use with their canes to figure out where they are going and navigating around the information desk. Another thing that we could implement would be to put a sign on our pillar that denotes that they are still in the information desk. This is a sign that would have to have large text and braille so that users that use braille could read it and users that don't and may have limited vision can see the large text. This would denote that they are not leaving into another room, but instead they can stay in the information center and understand that they are in the right place. These are just a couple ideas that I think would make our information center an even more accessible environment for our students. So with that, we have some strengths and weaknesses to these ideas. Our strengths include our wonderful student union operations staff. Personally, after working for them for three years, they have a huge readiness to change. They are actively asking for student ideas on how we can make student life better here in the CERC. Our director, Sheree Wilson, is a big believer in the student life is the living room of the CERC. And we, I hope... Sorry, I know that they can implement at least some of these strategies. And I was actually talking with my boss this morning about how um, we can denote and um, implement some of my research into this area of life. 
Some of our weaknesses, obviously, the pillar is an issue. Um, it is our structurally sound pillar that keeps everything moving, so we can't really remove it. Um, but some of our weaknesses also might be due to budget restraints. Um, since we are kind of in the middle of the school year, budgeting can be a little difficult to change around. But I'm hoping that going to the next year, we could allot for a little bit more room for it. Um, and then also company assistance. With the WEPA printers, it's hard to always change the mind of big companies. Um, so that can definitely be a, diff a difficult hurdle to navigate, but um, I'm sure with enough persistence from Central Washington, we can do it together. <laughs> um, and with that, some of our opportunities, as I mentioned before, demonstrating to WEPA that there is a need for accessibility across all their printers, not just in one college or a couple colleges. Um, this is a nationwide thing that can be done. So some next steps with this um, research. Um, as I mentioned before, the Student Union Operations team has a huge desire to grow and improve. And so um, I have been talking about this information to my bosses, um, especially our director of the Student Union, Sheree Wilson. Um, and I've taken that information to them, and I hope that they will be able to implement it um, for this venue. Additionally, there is an opportunity for similar research across campus. Um, the student union is just one facet and the information center is just one facet inside of this big building. And so I hope that some other students will take on the accessibility charge and um, fight for more across campus. And in reflection of this capstone project, um, I have been able to see the impact of what I do in my job personally. Um, seeing the impact of how I can impact students every single day and even just make their day a little bit brighter by showing someone who does have a sensory disability um, how they aren't this anomaly. They can live day-to-day -day life just like you and me. Um, and that just comes with some patience and understanding. And um, I've learned that it's as simple to tell my coworkers as this is how you can help them. Um, and that's just really the impact of what the Information Center does. Um, on a larger timeline, if this project was extended a little bit more, um, student voices would have been very beneficial in um, researching this area of the CERC. Um, just hearing their voices, hearing what students that have disabilities and do not have disabilities have to say um, would be crucial in um, implementing even more change into our student life. Um, Lastly, this project um, just seeks to make this university a more accessible place for those disabilities. And I hope this is just one drop into the big bucket of change for Central Washington. So you might be asking, what's next for me? Um, I am graduating this June in hopes of getting a job upon graduation, um, of just helping people. That's a big goal of mine. Um, and just continuing to share what accessibility and disability rights can do in this world. Um, and I'm getting married in June, so that's pretty exciting too. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you guys for um, watching online. Thank you guys for being here in person. Um, and I hope you guys learned something today. Thank you. Did you want to entertain some questions from the audience? Yes. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, Mike has written in the chat. Okay, let's yeah. see if there's any. I don't see any questions. But if anyone does, feel free to just send them in the chat. Um, and I would love to answer them. Um, so I'll wait a couple minutes for that. Okay, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that was the next thing to see. <laughs> okay, I'll wait a quick second to see. You can also welcome if anybody has comments they would like to share. Yeah, yeah, if anyone um, would like to share their thoughts um, or some comments or anything that um, they found interesting. I'd love to hear it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise online. What? Otherwise online. Yeah.
So are you facilitating this or just? Um, that's really what we're building, but um, I defer to you. That's great. Um, it's like if you were to do a focus group, you know, it's like what's, you know, it's like how do you think you might structure that? Um, okay. Um, focus group would be specifically inviting people to talk. Yeah. Okay. Like okay. specifically working with students, counseling students, what they're like. Okay, um, so if you guys um, had any ideas on how we could um, structure the CERC or even just some areas of student life that would um, see some improvement with accessibility, um, let us know in the comments. I would appreciate it. Um, this is an open forum, so um, everyone's comments on accessibility um, are welcome and can ideas to the table. So you made the suggestion of uh, getting student voices. So mm -hmm. one of the specific suggestions could be to hold a forum or a cafe or something yeah. uh, or having a place where they could put those suggestions or have an opportunity to talk about them. Yeah, that would be um, awesome. And I think even if we had sort of, I don't know, made Accessibility Club a little bit bigger and could um, expand our um, presence on campus, um, gain some more student voices. Um, I think most of my friends that I talk to, they barely even know what accessibility is, and I have to kind of give them the rundown on it, um, especially outside of web accessibility. Um, most people, when they hear universal design, um, they just think of it as this web accessibility, how can we make this user experience better? Um, but it goes into the public space too. Um, and that could be a key area to work on. Are those two clubs like who that, that focus on accessibility or disability? We do have an accessibility yes. studies club. Okay. Um, but since the program is like an online program, it's like it's a, a little, it's a groundbreaking and yeah. it's the first online club. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that is to follow up by your theme of significantly trying to be uh, accommodating for its students yeah. has a very large online population and that's yeah. nice to be accessible too. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time we forget about that side of Central's campus of the online population. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you guys for listening.